Hey guys, welcome back to another educational video. This is the youtube.com forward slash generic tech support channel. If you guys are watching this, you should know that everything we do is for educational value. All the software is purchased or used under legal availability. This channel does not promote or suggest the use of pirated software. All links are located on the Tech Guy One wiki page. This channel, again, is for educational purposes only. Like and subscribe for more content. I provide you guys the best practices or best experience and insight into doing things, but I don't know everything. So if you guys know something that I don't, please leave it in the comments. Thanks again for watching. Hey guys, so I wasn't planning on releasing a video for tonight or to tomorrow, um, but today was an interesting day because the news is out that there was a breach that took place at TeamViewer, and apparently they leaked data. So I decided that today I would create a video on how to remove TeamViewer from your network. Um, you could use the same script if you want to use it to remove the application and strip all the configuration and settings straight off of your Windows 10 or Windows 11 machine. It should honestly work for Windows 7, 8, 8, 1, 10, and 11. But for the sake of this video, we're just going to shoot it on Windows 11. I'm going to walk you through the process on how to remove TeamViewer and all the configuration. Um, the script itself, I'm going to put that on the Git repository. Uh, it'll be in the wiki just with all the other stuff that exists. So if you just follow the um, channel directly through that, and what I'll do is maybe right here where I'm talking, I'll take some screenshots and show you specifically where you have to go in order to uh, get to the uh, Git repository where the script will sit. But ultimately what you do is you just run it as a batch. It will uh, kill and delete the configuration for TeamViewer host as well as client off of your machine. Um, you can run it as a logon script or if you use like a, if you're part of like a managed service provider or something like that, you want to use it to uh, publish through like, um, I don't know, uh, there's so many different ones like Pulseway, Ninja One, or one of the other MSP based software. Uh, you could use it to do that as well. Uh, so without further ado, let's uh, kick this off so that way I can uh, show you how this works. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install this garbage on this test machine. Now this test machine, again, has no internet access, and that's done on purpose because I don't want TeamViewer installed on anything. Uh, TeamViewer at this point is really only used for uh, scam companies. I don't know of anybody that's legit that still uses TeamViewer, um, but that said, there are still the cases where you find it on machines and you wanna get rid of it. If you need some kind of remote application, I would strongly suggest you check out Splashtop. Uh, which is, think of it like log me in or go to my PC, but way better. It's just, it's worlds better um, from a configuration standpoint. Now, I will say that the only limitation I know of with Splashtop is that if you run like AutoCAD software and you're running like a uh, NVIDIA Quattro video card, I know that there's some conflicts with those video cards and the drivers that are used on the Splashtop application. But otherwise, I would avoid this with all, at all, honestly, at this point, if you're running this stuff, you might be better off just installing like Ultra VNC or Tight VNC and then not using a password and, and waving a big red flag out in front of your business that says that, you know, well, I welcome ransomware. Because this is, again, it's really only used for criminals at this point, so there's absolutely no reason to have it. But it likely exists on a lot of computers and a lot of networks, a lot of infrastructures all over the internet. Um, from companies that just decided that they were too cheap to spend the extra four bucks a month to buy an application that actually works and secure, so they use this free version of this garbage. So let's uh, get this stuff installed, and then we I will walk you through on the uh, scripting to remove it. So for the sake of this video, I'm actually just going to run this as uh, install, and I'm also going to do the unattended installation. So basically, I'm going to install it as if it has absolutely no security, and. Uh, once it gets installed, we'll go through the uh, configuration. I'll show you how to remove it easily with a script. Now, keep in mind that the older versions may not have the uninstall.exe, which is found in the program files directory. And if it doesn't, you can copy that file directly into the program files directory from one or a newer version, and it'll still allow you to uninstall the older version. So that's something you're probably going to uh, grab and then just copy it over, and then you can run the script to use the uninstall to uninstall the application. But the script itself, um, and I'll walk you through it in a second here. Um, so this isn't going to start. Obviously, it doesn't have a connection. 
but we can see now it is installed. So let's, uh, let's drill into this path here and do an open file location. And if we scroll down, we'll see that there's an uninstall. So if we go into view, show more, file name extensions, we'll see it's uninstalled at exe. You could grab that uninstaller and put it on version 5 or version 2 or version 1 um, in the 32 or the 64-bit version. Uh, it's a 32-bit uninstaller. So it'll work on any platform version. So if you need it, just grab this newest version of the software, install it or update the software you're currently running, grab that and install that exe and then paste it into the program files team viewer directory or create a script to copy, robocopy that actual uninstall into every single one of your computers on your infrastructure. Then once you have that done, what you'll do is you'll go over to the Git repository if you're not already there um, and we'll do edit here. You can show the configuration, which is just there's an SC config team viewer to disable the service. We're going to stop the actual service after we disable it. We're going to task kill the team viewer executable that's running. And then we're going to run the uninstall scripts that are going to uninstall the actual team viewer application. And then we're going to delete the team viewer service. And then all of this junk here is the configuration settings for team viewer itself. Now this one here for your HK users specifically, this non-packaged C uh, executable, inside of that location is your Microsoft font settings and your video settings, so they could turn on your video or your microphone remotely. Um, obviously, you're going to want to run that because that'll remove that stuff. And then the configuration in the rest of this stuff. So, for instance, the uh, the Team Viewer session that is going to contain your uh, config and settings. You're going to find the uh, uh, pilot session reporting. That's going to have uh, likely in clear text password information. Um, the uh, uh, team viewer configuration data, the config file itself, is going to be where the pointer goes, so where, where you're logging to. Um, and then the API controls, that actually controls the VPN portion of the actual application. So once you do that, then it'll, it'll run the remover, uh, uh, remove directory and then quietly and um, fully with the subdirectories. So once you run this, it'll actually get rid of this application. So let's just right click on our batch file now. We'll choose run as administrator and choose yes. I'm gonna run through that. We'll see this disappear here in a second. Now, oh, there it is, it's gone. So now if we go into control panel, We go into uninstall a program. We're not gonna see it there anymore because it's gone. And it, it, we can even go another step and go into here and do regedit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to find and we're going to do keys for team viewer. We're going to hit find next so that way we could find the key for team viewer. Now this shouldn't find anything because once that script runs and it deletes that information out of the system it literally strips TeamViewer completely from the system. Now you could run the uninstall with the forward slash s to just uninstall the application, but uninstalling it doesn't get rid of all the garbage that TeamViewer installs on the back end, all the configuration settings, all the password saved settings, and again, most of those passwords are saved in clear text in the registry. You really don't want that stuff hanging around. So running that script will strip all of that information out of your config. So there we go. So we can see, finished searching through the registry. So there's nothing in there as far as a key is concerned. So at this point, TeamViewer's been killed. It's been stripped. Again, I'll put that script inside the uh, Git repository. If anybody needs it, grab it. And the only reason I'm making this video today is literally just because of the uh, breach that took place at TeamViewer. There was a public release or announcement about eight hours ago about uh, how uh, they had a compromise. Basically, people uh, hacked their infrastructure and stole passwords and authentication data, remote uh, commands, and all that other stuff. So just, if you can, get rid of this junk so that way you can protect your infrastructure and your systems. All right, guys, let me know down in the comments if you need anything else. If there's anything you run into, any issues, any errors, hit me up, let me know, and I could help you out with that. If you're on like Blackpoint or something like that or a uh, third-party application like antivirus or something, you need to stop the services, just let me know. I could put the uh, command and configuration into the script repository so you could grab it. All right, guys, thanks again. Take it easy. Stay safe out there.